uh, I'm also addressing through this the 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 misconception that uh, templates are heavy to use. They are full of angle brackets and it's ugly code. Uh, but there has been a lot of effort in the C++ standardization to make sure uh, to, to, to improve the things on that count. And uh, they're not as uh, uh, as dreadful as they are. The template errors are uh, still around, so that we'll spare for some other talk. Uh, this is from the perspective of uh, making sure the code is not... Uh, uh, how C++ helps you write code, which is just normal uh, looking. And you, see you walk into the gym. How would you like things to be? You walk into the gym, your instructor is standing there, already ready for you, stares at you, says good morning, and uh, do your five sets of crunches, please. That's what you get from him without you saying anything. Uh, you may have watched <laughs> this uh, movie, uh, Drishyam, where the guy walks into his regular tea stall and gets served exactly what he wants every time he does so, right? I walk into the hall, my children are watching TV, they just see me and they just, uh, switch it off. They know exactly what I want from them and they do it. We all have these kind of situations where uh, things just fall in place. And I don't know if you remember this guy from quite some while ago. He is uh, Ronan Keating. And he said, you say it best. Anybody unmuting? And completing. When you say nothing at all. If things happen automatically, like we are used to pretty much in C++, like at the end of the scope, things will be cleared out. Uh, memory will be managed. Uh, locks will be released. That's the kind of thing that uh, that we should have all throughout. And uh, if you see, I'm pretty much walking that uh, that path of making code very easy to understand and easy to use and uh, to be precise also at the same time. Uh, my talk, as was mentioned on, on uh, NCPPCon 2022, was about how you can write in a concise way using the pipe operator, uh, how you can have code, uh, which is almost 100% business logic and 0% syntax. So uh, I'm pretty much uh, strong on this concept of keeping it concise. And why not? We have been spoiled by C++ here. Uh, C++ gives us performance without explicitly asking for it, without writing anything differently. Uh, you get inlining of functions without stating it. You get fold expressions without having to go through and walk through every parameter and ensuring things are right. Uh, you get type conversions for uh, ease of use and, uh, uh, and ease of calling functions, interoperability, et cetera. Uh, you have copy elision, where whole objects, huge ones, may be returned, but the cost to you is totally zero because it's totally elided, that there is no copy. You you might think that there is a copy there, but it's not. Coroutines, how do you say something is a coroutine? You just use a co underscore keyword, right, inside the body, and you don't have to say anything else, and it becomes a coroutine. And these are just some enumerations, as you understand. So without saying if things happen, that's a very good state to be in because when the compiler does it for you, it would be done right, okay? And then we land into the template world where we have, uh, uh, let me read it with some struggle. It's an O stream iterator of vectors of pairs of strings and endpoints. Uh, this example on the slide, is a cooked up one, but I've definitely come across situations where you get templates and templates of templates, and it becomes a little too much to even mention this. And that's the point of instantiation. You have to name it once at the, at the time of creation, your intention of what you want. And 
you have to name have that big uh, name. Uh, second example, sender pool of buffered protocol, uh, which is a TCP protocol doing fragmented binary exchange, whatever. And there is observability happening on a cloud or something with Prometheus dealing with many stat items, which are fields of doubles. Uh, it's quite a mock -up. And we would definitely love to shorten all of this up and not have to specify a lot. OK, so verbose at the place of definition and also at the place of use. OK, we would like to do something about both of all of these. OK, uh, previously I have discussed about templates. It's uh, something which I practice quite a lot and uh, I have uh, uh, given at least these two talks uh, which are aimed at uh, easing things for uh, people who are not already very comfortable with templates. And uh, it's quite in agreement with the industry leaders. Uh, and I've just shown some examples here. There are many talks uh, where uh, uh, templates are covered. And as you see here, it's not meta programming anymore. It's just normal programming as you see the title of this talk. Uh, and these are just some noted noted talks that I've put here. And I know I'm not just doing justice to many of the others. Very good quality content which is there. So I, I request you to go and check these out. Uh, but why even go for templates and generic programming? Uh, I would let the master uh, John Kalp uh, tell us uh, what it is. And this is a lovely five minute lightning talk from CPPCon 2019 uh, where he tells uh, why people prefer templates over uh, OOP was his point. But let's listen to just a short clip. You don't hear it, right? Yeah. I think I will have to uh, reshare my uh, desktop. I think you have to share the audio. Yeah. 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 With with audio on. Uh, what we're trying to work with, yeah. and that allows unlocks all sorts of optimization. Is it better now to optimize that away? So essentially what we've done is we've done this shift where we've moved the compiler from not knowing what we're trying to work with to knowing what we're trying to work with. And that allows, unlocks all sorts of optimizations. And that is why the cool kids don't like object-oriented programming. Okay, so the point being made here is uh, if we look at the slide, there were two sides. One was an OOP side and the other one was uh, uh, was the template side. If you have OOP, you don't know the types. If you have templates, you don't know the types. And you would write some common code. Let's call it oh, uh, common code for now. Uh, but when the code compiles with templates, you actually know the specific types that you're dealing with. And that's why generic programming wins over uh, regular object-oriented programming. Not everything has to be virtual and indirect calls and uh, other problems of uh, object orientation and inheritance would come in uh, versus when you have templates, you just compile uh, things with uh, the compiler compiles things with the specific knowledge of uh, uh, of the specific types. And a lot of these optimizations just become possible and feasible. And this is why uh, uh, people prefer uh, templates over uh, over the uh, over the object oriented, and I would like to just address that that one part where uh, it is not looking heavy for the user. Okay, so let's look at uh, at at a template uh, function. So you must have come across the need to have a two string on some type employee, then you come across the need to have two string on a message on something called as location, on something called as contact, and you see the pattern, there's so much repetition, and if they are doing similar kind of things, uh, you might just want to create a template. And that's how uh, you have your, let's say, first template. When you have such a template, the, the, the way you use is uh, like this. The 
you have a template, you have a location and you want to call the to string on your location. And so you pass your location by saying I'm passing you a location to this function object to, to this function instantiated from the template. But really, do you have to say the same thing two times? Like the compiler knows that this is of type location. And do we have to definitely say we don't need to say this at all because the compiler can figure out uh, by looking at the uh, at the data type being passed, what really is uh, is passed and the correct instantiation, the correct template is created and, and, and invoked at that point. OK, uh, so for one parameter, the compiler can definitely figure out if we have more than one. Is the same thing possible? Now you have two things. Let's say you have my location and JSON encoder, and you want to call to string by using this. Uh, of course, you would specify both parameters now, but would the compiler be able to figure out both of these? The answer again is uh, uh, is a yes. Okay, and so to string my location and JSON encoder would instantiate the template instance for uh, these two specific types location and json encoder and uh, invoke the function at this point okay uh, with non type parameters uh, this is the same function from the last screen but maybe you thought that maybe you can improve the life of your users you don't need them to instantiate encoders maybe you just have an enum and you now have the need to take the enum where you can take control once the user just gives you the intent of what they want to do through the enum and you make it happen inside the uh, template function. Now, this is possible. So even if there are more template, uh, more arguments to the template, uh, the compiler is still able to figure out what is the data type because the compiler knows for sure and you you still continue to call it this way okay now this is the same uh no this is without the striked off things uh you have the the type json here okay now you see you might come across the situation that the format of uh, if you see the previous slide uh, the format json is a runtime uh, is a parameter passed at runtime uh, this may be known to you upfront at compile time okay maybe you have a default in your system maybe you have a set uh, uh, a set uh, compile time configuration or uh, you have uh, you have made the decision you have the possibility of using the others but at this place you definitely know you want to use the specific one but this one definitely is a runtime passed argument and uh, as you understand it is not it it, it can't be uh, guessed uh, the runtime value uh, what what will the runtime value be inside that function cannot be guessed right up front but maybe you want to pin it down to a particular format in that case you can even take non-type parameters inside your template list so your template uh, template parameter list may comprise of types as well as non-types these are values and they have to be constants they can be pointers uh, and uh, they they have to be uh, they have to be determined at uh, at compile time so when you have a, a string like this, uh, a two string function like this, now when you invoke my location, definitely the compiler is able to figure it out, right? Actually, the compiler tells you this. It's, it's able to get that this is a location. Okay, no matching function call to location reference. A uh, two string taking location and it tried this. Uh, the error may be a little longer. I'm just pasting the relevant relevant points here. The uh, the uh, help note which comes along with it says uh, argument deduction and substitution was tried with this function, but it could not deduce, deduce FMT. Now FMT is an argument which is independent of 
the past or uh, the past parameters. It's a parameter. It's a template parameter which is not dependent on the past arguments and parameters. That is definitely not determinable. If I ask you to to decide which one it is, uh, we won't know. Uh, and the same is a problem with the compiler. So what do we do? OK, that one stuck around. So this is the same thing. Let us specify what really this did, did not work on the last screen. So let's specify what really might work. So you you want to say JSON is used and my location is passed. But this one also will not work because you cannot specify the template argument number two without specifying template argument number one. Uh, just like in the arguments that you pass the parent, the uh, arguments that you pass uh, to the calls, I should use parameters for templates and arguments for a function called past parameters and values, uh, past values. So, uh, so just like when you call a function, you have to pass the left hand side most left leftmost uh, parameter first, and then the next one. You can't directly pass the second one. Uh, the same is the case with this, and you don't have to know a new rule. Uh, so with templates, you cannot specify just the second one, even though the first one is inferred, can be inferred from the other one. You go to do string, and with with both the uh, template arguments specified, and now you have uh, a proper instance which works. Okay, so you have the invocation in place. This uh, so if you have any parameters which cannot be decided through the past arguments, you will have to help the compiler with it. So if you remember, make unique uh, can take any type, can, can instantiate any type on the heap, but you have to pass explicitly to make unique the type that you want back, because what it should instantiate and return, you are not already passing to it. Okay, you're passing the parameters that uh, go to its constructor, but somewhere you do have to say, which parameter it is. So to make unique, you always have to say explicitly what you want back, and that's the type that you will get back. OK, and uh, we know we, we can default arguments passed to a function, the values that that, that are passed to a function. How about uh, templates? Let's try. Uh, so we have this template from the last screen, and all I've done is just added a default. Uh, the format now is pinned down to JSON. And now if we do this, exactly the thing that worked on the last screen. But if we try to do this, that too just works. And if you don't do any of that, if you just call the function with uh, just your location, it is able to pick the default values uh, default parameters, and this is a non-type parameter, so it's a value. So it's it's able to take the value default type or the default value from uh, the the default specification in the template list. And so even the third line uh, coolly works. So uh, as you see, if you just do the right things uh, in in your in your template uh, definition, you can definitely get away with. Uh, without specifying and the functions are especially blessed in C++ with uh, uh, with just uh, not having to specify and the compiler being able to deduce exactly what you want. OK, now let's see an overload. Uh, we consider a slightly different uh, a different function now. This is a function which will take your container and a comparator and it will sort it and deduplicate entries and give it back uh, to you. OK, so here we have uh, uh, so, so we have two things which are going into this function, uh, a container and the comparator. Now. You can. Choose to again, we wanted to pin down the parameter in the last slide to JSON here. We want to pin down the, the, the comparator to something. And we want by default some behavior. So if that behavior is directly uh, known to the implementation, and you just ask for the uh, for the container to be passed on to this uh, function, you can do this. And now, 
even though it is the same looking template, but they are two different ones taking one and two template functions and overload also helps you, uh, you know, not have to specify at the call site exactly what parameters you have to uh, you have to choose. OK. So here now you have a vector of int and uh, if you call sort dedupe on it, it definitely works. And the first uh, call here, uh, I'll take a pointer. The first call here calls uh, the second template uh, instance and the one with just one parameter. Obviously, no surprise. And this one calls the previous one where you actually said what will happen. But at this point, you might not be clear exactly what happens inside this uh, inside this call. And uh, and really, you might want to. Um, you might want to take a different approach to this also, but the overload thing definitely works and helps you. Uh, you know, be free and their implementations may actually depend on each other, and that's an easy win that you can have and not have to duplicate code. OK, don't duplicate the code. But here. I've changed slightly just one thing. I'm taking the same container comparator and this is the same function with two items. But here what I've done is I have specified the. Uh, the default type. OK, this should be the default uh, type. Sorry about that. So this is a default type and it is also a dependent uh, type. So yeah, I think it's right. Uh, so it is a dependent type. The container has something called as uh, value type and for the value type you want to create a less than uh, instance as your comparator. That is the one that will be used inside your function. And so now uh, this is uh, if, if you use dependent types uh, in your template params, then it also alleviates you and the user from having to, uh, it, it helps you to have good defaults first, and then because of the defaults, then you don't have to explicitly specify the default one for uh, for the invocations. So now if we see the sort dedupe, this one is the same as before. Uh, Oh, is it? And this one now, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the first, the first uh, call still calls the second template instance, and while the second one calls the first one. And in this case now, uh, I think I should have removed the, uh, you know, uh, I should have removed this uh, past parameter, and it would just figure it out. Uh, but at this point, you might get a duplicate. Oh, sorry. I think uh, I didn't have the animation in a slightly different order. Now you don't need the second template. And now just the one template works uh, all the all the tasks for you. The first invocation also goes to the first one where the comparator is is just inferred. OK, trailing return types. So you might want to use auto. So when you don't want to specify the type, when you don't want to explicitly be uh, talking about the types, you might just want to use auto. OK, and uh, this is an example. You can definitely pass two integers and it will give you a sum. And you know the auto would just give you a, uh, would just give you an int back. But sometimes you don't know what exactly will be returned. For example, in the case that is shown here, uh, the string and uh, and and uh, double are being mashed up. Somebody wrote an operator for for these two types, and now they want to use it. Uh, and this sum function would then start using that operator, which they must have implemented. Here, the type t becomes the string, and the type u becomes double. But what is the resultant type? Do you know? they decided and we don't know what it is. So in order to specify and be explicit, you might want to say exactly what type you would you you would get back out of uh, out of this uh, this function. So you might be tempted to to use. Uh, so you, you should definitely use the auto return type when it is a straightforward uh, a straightforward function and it definitely works. 
Uh, in some remote cases, you might just want to specify explicitly uh, what uh, type you want to uh, you want to return from the function. Actually, this slide I have uh, mistakenly placed here. I should have slowly introduced auto and then come to here. But there you are. You have auto as the type where you don't have to specify or specify uh, the thing. And as you see in the return also, auto definitely works. Now in C++20, we did get abbreviated function templates. Uh, which can transform this function that we had from before. It's the same one into this one. Now you don't have to clutter the definition also with a lot of template and angle brackets. Uh, you can just say something, some two things will be passed. Exactly what this template is also saying, by the way, uh, some two things will be passed and it will give you back the first one. And here uh, you are returning an auto also because there is no way to say exactly what you will uh, what you'll return. And this can still now be used just like before. If you didn't have the definition on the top and you just had the definition at the bottom and you define the implementation, now you can still use it like before. You have your comparator and your vector of ints and it just works. OK, I think I have a question. A uh, question on the previous slide, uh, what would be the return type when string and integer are passed? Does the compiler throw out the error? OK, so here. The way this this would work for even the string and double and the string and integer. Uh, the sum will actually be instantiated by looking at the types that you pass to it. OK, so. At the call site, the compiler sees that the first parameter is a std string and the second one is an int in your case now and double in this case. So it'll it'll stamp out a, a, a real instance from this template of a function which is uh, with the T as string and U as double or U as int in your case. Inside when it tries to create the body, it will try to create this line which says string plus uh, your int or string plus y which is double or int. Now that the compilation of that line will need the operator which the user has defined somewhere else uh, to be able to support this. Now if they decided to implement an operator which is an operator which takes a string and a double only uh, that uh, uh, that operator can still handle the int case. OK, because it's just an operator function which is defined. So if you can visualize or if you want, I can uh, type it out, but I'll not take the time. Uh, if it's not clear, I, I, I'll, I, I'll do that for you. So if you have an operator which takes the left hand side as a string and the right hand side as uh, an int or a double, that uh, can definitely take the string and an int. OK, it, it can take the other type. If you created the one with a double and you passed an int, it would uh, use it with a double. OK, but if that operator is itself a template. So you had a template T and you said operator. String concatenation operator, so the operator is still operator plus, but if you defined with a, a template T, uh, the second type, then that would not be instantiated with the double. Uh, it would need uh, an integer implementation, and that would actually invoke the the, the integer stamped out function of the operator. Okay. So in the normal case, it will be a compiler error. Uh, you say when the operator plus is not defined for the given types. Yes. So this function has smartly just delegated it to the operator plus and you will now hit the errors inside the operator plus. Now, uh, if you use concepts, you can have some definitions. Uh, um, you, know, you, you can catch that kind of a problem right here. But now uh, in this case, specific case, the guts will throw out the errors and you will get a little slightly longer error. 
and honey has just uh, wanted to add uh, i think in c14 we got the convenient syntax for automatic return types deduction without redundancy yes yeah so you exactly uh, you don't have to specify what your return type is uh, the body defined uh, being uh, being right in place uh, can definitely decide but if you have a declaration and a definition gap then this auto is not determined and then you might have to specify in some way like this okay the uh, there is another possibility which i was uh, yeah if we look at the second the next slide and then revisit this one it will be uh, a good thing to do okay lots of pressure uh, did you share the feedback link <laughs> no 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 uncle <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I thought it's time to wrap up. So, no, no. Um, so, so this is the same slide that we are visiting again. Here, uh, really, uh, what I wanted to say is, uh, uh, in the case when you have auto parameters, your return type is not specified. You just say you will get a, a reference, but a reference to what? Again, anything under the sky. It can just be anything. So, uh, so really, uh, you might want to say that the type is the same as uh, that of container uh, of the first argument okay it's the reference of the first argument but you cannot say it here if you say decal type cont reference here you cannot uh, it won't compile because at that point when the compiler reads that word it doesn't know what cont is so this is the one place this is also one place where you need the trailing return type where you say that i'm taking just anything but i'm defining what i want to return so here i should have added that specific example also so here you might want to put an arrow and say uh, that it returns uh, the same type as cont because after this function arguments finish you definitely know what cont is and you can say uh, decal type of contract Okay, and so uh, then this becomes a reality again. So, uh, like I said, the slides were a little uh, out of order. So, this is something which came in C20. Another reason to upgrade your compiler, and essentially these two definitions what you write the long way in C98, and what you write in this way in C20 is they are just equivalent uh, with the uh, special thought that I told you about the return type. Uh, so auto is not that automatic uh, or it can be too automatic for you uh, so you have to just uh, take that call based on it but template wise these two are just the same and this is a shorthand for defining templates again you didn't even need to use the word template no angle brackets so i think you should like it okay uh, there was another slide which i didn't put uh, i thought it was too straightforward but i'll just mention it quickly uh, you can uh, even abbreviate, uh, you can even, uh, you know, pin down some parameters by using the using uh, using declaration. So if you have something called as using my vec equal to vector of ints, so everywhere you use my vec, you know that it's that specific type of a vector of ints. And so anywhere you create my vec new vec, uh, you know, uh, that you have created a vector of ints, and so again, you don't have to clutter your the the long uh, long uh, nested templates of templates, which we saw on the uh, on the initial motivation screen. Uh, you can abbreviate all of that once, and then use the shorthand everywhere. Although the compiler errors won't spare you, and they will actually define uh, the long names of these which is really helpful because you know there's some error somewhere. OK, so uh, you can definitely use the using uh, thing to to abbreviate uh, or to shorten your uh, template code and not be explicit in so many times uh, in so many different places. OK, now using class templates, uh, this one was essentially focused on function templates. Uh, I'm just touching upon a brief idea about uh, class templates. Now, this is a class template. The vector is a class template. We all know that. But will that line work? On the previous screen, we had vector of ints saying that, you know, 
very disciplined i'm creating a vector of things does somebody wants to does somebody want to tell me if this uh, works if this line as is compiles i didn't use the right animations here i should have hidden the second part actually it does if you didn't know in c++ 17 uh, the possibility of not having to explicitly mention the type name was uh, was added to the language so there again by looking at the instantiated uh, uh, by looking at the values inside the initializer list you can uh, you can actually uh, figure out that this should be a vector of integers of course and so uh, this line definitely works uh, and and the uh, so we have a c tad which comes in but yeah um, we 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 will we'll just touch upon it so uh, this pattern is uh, finding a lot of favor and uh, it's so helpful that you now need not clutter uh, your types too much uh, and as you see here you have log guard which takes a mutex type if you know so log guard can take any uh, mutex type and the standard library wanted to be generic and be a log guard which can work with your mutex types and the standard mutex types and any future mutex types also so they made it a template so the the real uh, log guard instance is a log guard which takes a template parameter of mutex let's say std mutex and so you would be forced to say that uh, pre c17 you would be forced to say log guard of std mutex but since c17 if you're not already using 17 please upgrade your compiler and the language standard uh, and so uh, here the compiler knows the specific type of the mutex being passed and from that it is able to determine uh, what what real instance you want okay similar thing with shared pointer you can pass the uh, new instance and your shared pointer is ready which is of a particular type very handy concise shortened code and you're not really getting confused here and of course like everybody says, I will repeat it one more time. Please name your uh, variables and functions and classes and types. Well, if you see, I'm not using type T much except for the sum case and uh, uh, you know the sum slide where we had the question also. So I encourage you to just give the right name so that you actually uh, say what you mean also when you say it. When, it. when you don't have to say it, it's perfect. Okay, and CTAD is what really helps you, uh, helps the compiler to determine the real type. So as you see here, this is an instance of vector. Now, VI2, is that an instance of what? You are passing in the initializer list to iterators. So obviously it's uh, it's a vector of iterators of vector to integer. But no C17 CTAD and thank you very much Sudhindra. I see your uh, answer on chat. Uh, you're absolutely correct. The, the, the type of VI2 is really VI, which is a vector of int and uh, the CTAD is what helps uh, helps types decide uh, what uh, you know what real type you actually mean here by looking at the past parameters of your uh, of your uh, uh, constructor, uh, which can be of any type iterator. But if you have if it follows this uh, uh, this this trait, so you you check with iterator traits and pass that type to it and you check the value type of it and if you find if it's an iterator trait if it's an iterator which is being passed to you then only will this iterator traits be instantiated will be a valid syntax otherwise it will be excluded from all considerations and so once that is instantiated you can use the value type of that iterator trait which for the first vector will give you int because int is the value type of that vector and so its iterator's value type is also int. And so int will be used. And this just tells the compiler that this is 
uh, this 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 constructor qualifies, which takes two somethings, two iterator, two iterators. They can be anything, but uh, since this uh, deduction guide helps the compiler uh, see uh, what real types you want, it actually instantiates this right hand side, which is a vector of the value type, which becomes vector of int. Okay, and how does it source the values? Of course, this constructor, which would be defined inside the vector, would actually make sure that through the uh, through that range of iterators, the values are picked up and this vector is formed. Okay, so CTAD is a big win. C plus plus seventeen got it, and uh, use it for your types. I recently, uh, I mean, I've used it uh, a number of times. I again recently used it, and I was reminded of how helpful it can be for our users, which is us on the other side of the implementation. OK, so in conclusion, uh, th there is so there is concepts also. OK, I, I think I have a next slide for that. In conclusion, your compiler knows everything. This was just a few days ago uh, from Matthew. Uh, I hate compilers. I can barely even win an argument without being correct against them. So the compiler knows it all. Uh, use type deduction and use dependent types uh, to ease out things in your implementation. And there is more to this. There is uh, more to the decal type auto. Uh, there is uh, naming types with uh, generic code. Um, there is CTAD. There are concepts. Sorry, I, I have not added that uh, point. There are concepts uh, which I thought I will cover cover all of this in this talk, but uh, all all of that does not fit. So maybe some other time. Uh, it also helps you write very concise uh, without clutter. Uh, template code on the implementation side as well as the call side, and it helps uh, all, all these things uh, help you just be direct without mucking about too much. So that is what I wanted to present to you today.